The title of my presentation today is My Endometriosis Story, a Generational Echo's Quest for Self-Love. Yeah? And I'm just going to start right away. Yeah? The unforeseen companion, those kind of uh, surprises that life brings to us every time. In a matter of minutes, I went from being on the top of a mountain to one of the deepest, darkest places of my life. I was pregnant two years ago, and I was six uh, weeks pregnant, and that was still the COVID time with all the restrictions. I had to go to the hospital. My husband had to, to just wait for me outside the hospital. I had to just go alone into a room full of ladies. One of them were like really crying, because they knew that they might be, uh, they, they, they might have a miscarriage as well. I go into the, the, the room with the doctor and they start to examine myself. And at some point they say, are you sure you, you are pregnant? And this is how I found out that I wasn't pregnant anymore. After that, I just say, I need to go. He said, no, you have to realize that you have to take this medication and this treatment. I say, I want to go. No, but you have to realize that we offer you the medication. I say, yes, I want to go. And then they say, if you experience any kind of fever or symptoms, you have to come back to the hospital. We wait for you in two weeks. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't think so, but I didn't say anything. And yet I just ran from the second floor of the hospital to meet my husband, and we just hug and cry. So I've been a psychological therapist already for a couple of years, and I encounter with different cases of women who, has, who had had a miscarriage. But until that moment, I couldn't even understand how deep the pain could be. So I met with my friend depression and a several lack of purpose because of that. And the thing is, uh, I couldn't even process the grief. It was so profound, I, I couldn't even process it. So I didn't want to take the medical leave until I had to. And uh, once I was over, like two months, I just focused all my energy into work. The thing is, uh, I don't know if you can relate to it, but most of our world ask us to abandon ourselves. What do I mean with this? It's asking us to abandon our rhythms, our hours of sleep, our hours of break, our hours of time with family. Hmm? Most of our organizations ask us to abandon ourselves. And once I got into this very tough time of my life, I just decided myself to let myself go. Therefore, I didn't have any boundaries anymore about food, sleep, work. I just went to do what was asked. And because the job that I was doing at that company was meaningful, right? I say, okay, this is the better way to just get out of this very dark and deep hole. So I came back to work and I designed with a very good team an e-learning module for 140,000 people about mental health. And at that point, I got the purpose on that. And I worked a lot because there were too many countries, too many cultures. The thing is, in the middle of that process, the pain started. I see the ball is stopped there. Eh? You have to, yeah, continue, yeah, passing along, yeah. Just behind you, yeah. You are all, man, you're fast. <laughs> Thank you. So the thing is, uh, the pain started one day, once a week, every three days, every two days, every day, and at some point, almost every hour. It took me more or less six months to be diagnosed. Let's see if I could catch it. 
Thank you. And after six months, I got two diagnoses. One, I had a dysbiosis, a bowel dysbiosis. That means when there is a problem in your bowels about the equilibrium of the microorganisms, and that hurts a lot. The second one, I got my tennis ball. This is the size of my cyst, of my endometriosis currently right now. Yeah, like this tennis ball. So, what can you see here is, this is the mo these are true pictures. This is the moment I gave birth because I decided not to go back to the hospital and I said, if my body stopped this, my body knows how to get it out. So I had, I actually gave birth, even though it was six weeks. And here you can see, this is my tennis ball. Okay? So, let's start with the... Oh, you go too fast, eh? I think it's... Okay. True or false? Endometriosis is a urinary, uh, you already knew that, right? Ah, of course. Okay, true. Uh, next one. Endometriosis is actually a disease in which tissue similar to the lining of the uterus, so every time we got the period, instead of going down, goes up. Hmm? And depending on how serious it is, it can go until even the nose and the ears. Yeah? Okay. Endometriosis affects an estimated in one in 10 women during their reproductive years. True or false? You said false? True. It's actually true. And the thing is that until now it remains, they, they calculated in the World Health Organization that six out of 10 women are undiagnosed. Yeah, because we have normalized the pain in our period, and that's not normal. It is not normal. So there are several treatments options available to cure endometriosis, and its causes are well established. True or false? Yes. It's completely false. The cause remain unknown, and there is no cure. What exists now, at least in terms of the medical uh, field, is how to treat uh, symptoms. Okay, last one. Currently, it takes from 10 to, from seven to 10 years to diagnose endometriosis, if you're lucky. Yesterday, I met with a person that it took 25 years to get diagnosed. Meanwhile, she has had at several surgeries until she finally got her diagnosis. Okay, so moving along, because then I suppose time runs. Okay, what do they have in common? Oprah, Tina Turner, and Salma Hajek. Sorry? No. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Yes, part of, yeah. They have suffered either sexual abuse, either domestic violence, either uh, abuse in the professional field. This year, Tina Turner passed away, and I saw a documentary in Amazon Prime where Oprah talks. And when she was talking about Tina Turner, she said, you know, we were the first generation who dared to talk about what was happening for decades, which is, well, it, as the pain in the period that is normalized is the violence and the abuse of women. Yeah? So I'm just saying this introduction because in my journey to, with my endometriosis, I started a really profound uh, process of dialogue with my body. And of course, with my deep grief. What 
I actually find out that I had in my body, in my womb, a lot of memories of all the women in my system who were abused, who had suffered domestic violence, and who were basically just, it, they made them small, not even a person, you know, when you are not able to talk or to express or to see for yourself. And the problem is that I haven't suffered then, but I have them inside of me, and therefore they can be triggered. That means that it's in my memories, my cellular, cellular, cellular memory. And what trigger mine? The loss of my baby. And all the memories and all the pain that was remaining silent for decades, women in my family. And also even the loss of their babies too. Because the, also another thing that is very unseen is when you are pregnant, but for weeks, and you, haven't, you, 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 you are not able to actually see the baby born, it seems that that grief should be shorter than any other grief. Because the rest don't understand. Oh, oh, don't worry. It's just, it was a few weeks. Or, you know, it's just not very understandable for most of people. Four minutes? Oh, I have to run. Okay. So, in the end, uh, I, I just want to say one short story in my, in my therapy. I could even feel some memories being in the wound of my mother when she was uh, working in a very uh, men-dominated world and how she suffered all the condescending and all the violence because she was a woman in that world. And that was also in my... I could even reach to that memory. So it was quite impressive. Uh, at the end, the, the deeper I dug, what I found is a profound fear of being a woman. Hmm? Okay, so running to the next one. Unspoken wisdom. One of the things that I actually take of all the experience, because I still got the ball, right? Inside of me. But now, at the beginning, I was afraid of my ball. Now it's my friend, because he's teaching me so much. And uh, one of the things is how to move from the past that is a burden to the past that is actually a foundation. In this first picture, this is one of the very famous pyramids of the Mayans in Mexico. When I visited there, it was really interesting how they built it, because it was in actually three or four stages. That means that there was a community of Mayans that would build their pyramid, but maybe they were just leave for 100 years, finding, I don't know, food or water somewhere else. And another generation would come back and they would be on top of that. They would just seal the first one and be on top of that. And again, 100 years, they leave and another generation comes back and do the same. So actually, it's a foundation that push you, you know, ahead instead of something that is a burden in your life. Uh, for me, the challenge these days for us as women is how we can return to ourselves, to this nurturing that is in our bodies, you know, and this feminine side that we have lost because we had to, to survive. We have to become strong, masculine women. We can with everything, with home, now we work. And everything that you throw at us, we can do it. What's the price now? Hmm? Uh, and the other thing is how, you know, I also realize in my process that I have a lot of strength, but that strength has come from the survival, all the memories in me. So now I'm walking a new path where I can find a new source of strength that doesn't come, that actually is a foundation. And that doesn't mean that I have to feel hate and being angry, you know? Uh, from self-abandonment to self-love, that's basically the journey. Yeah? And before I just, 
I want to leave you with a question, okay? And if you haven't seen this uh, movie, I really recommend it to you. Coco, right, from Disney. What unresolved issue from your past is coloring your present and creating a lens through which you see the world, you live the world, you feel your body, and you connect with others? That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much.